We've got a quorum, so I call the meeting to order now. First item on the agenda, the election of chairman. Uh, you may ask why we have to elect a chairman. Well, in the past terms, there weren't any election. So that's a tacit agreement that we should have a change uh, of chairmanship every two years. So I would like to have another election so that we can have a new chairman uh, since I've already served the required period. According to the 77.6 of our rules of procedure, uh, if uh, a member is a, ch a member or chairman of a consult consultative uh, committee on the same the subject matter, you are not eligible. To, for, so, for instance, if you are the chairman of the uh, Commission on Poverty, you are not eligible to be uh, the chairman of this subcommittee. So, according to Rule 22, uh, let's have uh, an annex four. Let's have uh, nominations of uh, chairman, and we need to nominate one uh, and a seconder too. I nominate Dr. Fernando Jung, seconder, uh, Dr. Kwok, Kwok Kake, seconds the nomination. Do we have a second nomination? Once again, do we have a second nomination for the third time? Any other nominations? If not, then the nomination is closed, and I congratulate Dr. Fernando Jung for his election as chairman of this subcommittee. Uh, now, hand over to Dr. Jung. Okay. Thank you for your support, members. Now we now we should now elect a deputy chairman. A valid nomination is one nominated by one member and at least seconded by another member. And of course, uh, the nominated member should uh, accept the nomination first. Mr. Peter Chung, I nominate uh, Mr. K.K. Fong. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Mr. Ronnie Tong seconds the nomination. Mr. Fung, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Do we have another nomination? If there's no other nomination, then I declare uh, Mr. Frederick Fung uh, is elected deputy chairman of the subcommittee on poverty. So, so much for the uh, formalities. We now. Move on to the next item on the agenda: poverty situation of persons with disabilities. Please invite the uh, officials and uh, the thirty or so deputations to join us. Our meeting would uh, go all the way to seven thirty, so it's hard work for every one of us.
咦？第一，第一二分未到啊！好，我哋歡迎咁多團體，亦都誒歡。I will welcome all the deputations, and I also welcome、uh, the administrations team. Welcome to this discussion on poverty situation of person with the disabilities.、Uh, the year before last,、uh, a report was published on the poverty situation report on disability. It shows that before policy intervention, the number of poor households with members of、uh, with disabilities is the the ratio is、uh, st uh, stood at forty five percent. That's a very serious situation, and that is a forty five percent of the households with members with disabilities. Forty five percent of them are living in、uh, poverty. With policy intervention,、uh, things. Are better, but still, the poverty rate、uh, was twenty nine percent. So thirty percent of them still live in poverty. That's a serious situation, and this is for the first time、uh, for the SAR government. We have been、uh, offer some the poverty data and、uh, poverty rate. We'd like to see、uh, some response made by the Commission on Poverty and the Administration in response、uh, in response to this situation.、Uh, we have thirty odd deputations, so、uh, I can only give them each、uh, three minutes each. I'm sorry about that.、Uh, as for the administration's paper,、uh, it's nothing. It's nothing new. It's、uh, really about the poverty situation report and the existing support measures. So, if the administration、uh, doesn't mind, I will just just invite the deputation to speak, and after that,、uh, I will invite the administration to respond, and members will then、uh, ask follow-up questions. Is that okay to members? Okay. I would like to remind deputations and individuals. Your speeches made here are not protected by the legal powers and privileges ordinance. In other words, you are responsible for your own speech. Every deputation will speak for three minutes. The first one to speak is Mr. Anka Hong from the Hong Kong Society for Rehabilitation Centre on Research and Advocacy. Good good afternoon. Well,、uh, this.、Uh, Hong Kong poverty situation report on disability is just like a mirror. It tells us the the poverty situation, the high risk factors, and also the the, the fact that、uh, the poverty rate、uh, among PWDs is very high. Of course,、uh, the report is just on the、uh, figures. It doesn't really tell you the personal experience of persons with disabilities. So it's not the really、uh, all comprehensive, not the full picture. I hope、uh, we'll be able to tell you more about the difficulties faced by PWDs. And I also like to supplement something in respect of the chronically ill. We have to understand the special characteristics of PWDs and、uh, the chronically ill, and that is、uh, they, they, their situ their、uh, situation would、uh, deteriorate over time, and there's no going back. For some PWDs,、uh, they can、uh, make certain improvements or or st stay the deterioration. And sometimes、uh, the disability is the cause. Sometimes the disability is the result. So、uh, disabilities lead to various problems,、uh, family problems,、uh, and health problems, and therefore they are in poverty. 
but if they don't have the means to handle problems associated with uh, disabilities, they end up uh, worse off, and uh, they will be poorer, and their disability will be even um, more just uh, suffocating. But uh, we need to do something to uh, tie in to 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 cope with the situation. We we are seeing a, a systemic problem with. Uh, Poverty among PWDs. This is a very good report, but there are two constraints. First of all, it doesn't really cover the uh, population of chronically ill persons, and also second, in respect of poverty, they only talk about income, but not uh, the expenditure on uh, rehabilitation and uh, health care. According to our uh, survey, uh, on average, they have to spend uh, two thousand in a recurring manner, two thousand dollars in a recurring manner every month, and five hundred uh, in a non-recurring manner each month, and uh, therefore the, they need more support. When we talk about the poverty of uh, PWDs, we have to first of all pay attention to the definition of. Uh, uh, PWDs. We use in Hong Kong use a medical model in defining the PWD. But for ICF and also the scale internationally adopted, they would uh, refer to the uh, limit constraints uh, of these faced by these people in participation in society. And we should also create uh, job opportunities for these people. For the, there are forty thousand of them. Twenty two percent. Are in poverty, and uh, fifty-three thousand are in households whereby, because of family, con because of uh, physical conditions, they can they are not economically active. So there should be retraining so that they can uh, be reintegrated into the community. So we have uh, two suggestions. We hope uh, members from different political parties and uh, the. Uh, LWB, HFB, and the relevant uh, organizations should uh, come up with something in cooperation on a sustainable manner so as to break the vicious cycle of uh, disabilities leading to poverty and poverty uh, making disability worse so that we can have uh, strategic measures to support uh, PWDs in poverty. And I hope the administration would. Uh, Review the uh, rehabilitation uh, framework for because if they have to wait for another three to four, five years for a major reform, that they pay a heavy price in terms of social costs and economic costs. I hope everyone would bear pay attention to their problems. Next, DAB, Mr. Cho Tinyam. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, lawmakers, and thank you, government officials. I'm the deputy spokesman of uh, well so. Welfare affair of the DAB. When it comes uh, to um, poverty among PWDs, uh, we have a three prong approach. First, education. We'll ask the administration to uh, strengthen training of kindergarten teachers. As um, when it comes to teaching, teaching um, PWDs, and we would like to increase the number of um, pre. Um, pre-kindergarten training places for PWDs and carers are faced with a heavy burden. A lot of papers and reports show that uh, they often face economic difficulties. We wonder if the administration can set up a carer subsidy carer living subsidy to alleviate their financial burden. What PWDs need most is employment because it will be beneficial to their social life and uh, their mental state. We hope the administration will Require employers of PWDs. Well, actually, to provide uh, employers of uh, PWDs with tax concessions.
and PWDs will have to wait for a very long time for residential care places. Uh, we hope that the, the number will increase so that they don't have to wait for as long. Thank you. Next is Hong Kong Association of the Deaf, Ms. Ms. Lau Lai Feng. We have uh, Ms. Lai acting as the interpreter. Well, um, there should be some employment quota system. The number of so that PWDs uh, will have a chance to work and uh, it will improve their mobility, social mobility. And it should start with the administration. They can be an example. And there can be more training for interpreters so that they can help uh, deaf people to increase their competitiveness. When it comes to finances, there should be financial subsidy for uh, NGOs helping PWDs uh, so that there will be more job opportunities for PWDs. Thank you. Next is Hong Kong Council of Social Service, Mr. Kwa Jun Chen. Thank you. I'm not going to repeat the figure about poverty among PWDs. First, the poverty rates among PWDs as compared with um, able bodies is a difference of 2.3 times. And for the um, OECD is 1.6 times. So uh, compared to other advanced economies, the situation in Hong Kong is more serious. And when it comes to calculation of uh, income of PWDs, but very often they incur a extra expenditure when it comes to, say, um, supporting devices and uh, medical expenditure, etc. And so the uh, poverty situation has been underestimated. We have three suggestions to make to improve uh, the situation for PWDs. First, employment. We think the administration should, by phases, uh, increase the number of job quotas for PWDs. For the uh, government, there are about 2% of PWDs employed in the government. However, the administration uh, refused to undertake that uh, uh, to set an indicator. If the administration does not act as a forerunner, how do you expect the NGOs or private sector to follow? It's been practiced in a lot of places, say in Taiwan, Japan, India, and the mainland. Uh, there is such a, qu a quota. Say, for example, Taiwan in 1990, there was legislation for this quota system. It's proved to be effective, and in 2009, the percentage has been increased to to get more PWDs employed. So it's if proved to be effective. The administration should uh, be the example to uh, employ a certain percentage of PWDs in the civil service. And there should be some tax concession for private sectors if they employ PWDs. There should be further support for employers of PWDs, not just uh, income su wage subsidy. There should be some um, outreach service, support service to help PWDs. And also t employers uh, will rest assured that there will be uh, sufficient support if they employ PWDs. When it comes to rehabilitation service, there is only six months and it should be extended to three years. When it comes to the um, um, deduction, non-deductible uh, income, it should be increased to encourage employment among PWDs. When it comes to social security, currently there is the low income family living subsidy. And uh, PWDs sh um, work hours should be aligned with single parent families so that they will be eligible for this subsidy. And PWDs uh, should be able to get CSSAs on an individual basis so that they can get social security. And under the CCF, uh, the um, elderly carer, it should be additional uh, subsidy, cash subsidy for carers of PWDs. Next is uh, Mr. Ronald Ho, Liberal Party Youth Committee. 
In Hong Kong, there are about 500,000 PWDs, about 7.4% of the population. They may be physically disabled or mentally disabled, and they're subject to certain constraints, and they have a lower education level. Even if they are willing to work, it will be difficult for them to work full time, and it's very easy for them to lose their jobs. They face financial difficulties. The likelihood is more than able bodied so the poverty situation among PWDs is more serious. 80% of PWDs benefit from social security, from the social security system. But as an affluent city, when uh, taking into account a um, cash um, subsidy, there is about 150,000 PWDs living in poverty. Well, there should be more support given to PWD so that they can enjoy a better life. So um, the social security system for PWDs should be reviewed to strengthen support. There is only the normal disability allowance and a higher DA. However, applicants should be assessed as, uh, as seriously disabled. That is, they have to be assessed and certified by doctors in of the HA Hospital Authority. That is, uh, to lose 100% earning capacity before they are eligible to apply for the DA. Well, when it comes to people who suffer from uh, organ disability or uh, loss of one limb, they are excluded. This is not comprehensive enough. We hope that the administration will review the policy so that it will be fair, so that PWDs uh, will get the support they need. Thank you. Next, we have Hong Kong Ample Love Society, Ms. Pearl Zhang. Good afternoon, everyone. The definition of PWD, well, back in 2009, the ombudsman criticized the social welfare department about uh, the the uh, DA system. It was uh, the criteria set in 1973. The definition at that time was simple, and they've taken reference of uh, employees' compensation. The uh, Rehabilitation Advisory Committee in 2013 conducted a review when it comes to eligibility. Uh, it's been it's uh, packed with 100% loss of earning capacity. It, this has caused difficulties for PWDs to apply for subsidies. So this 100% loss of earning capacity should be dispensed with. It's been over a decade. The definition of Peter of uh, disability should be changed as well. And there should be new criteria to assess the uh, level of impairment. And there should be more surveys done to get a better understanding of the situation. Well, there are um, different um, different types of impairment based on a number of different factors in different aspects. And uh, support and benefits will be classified into different types. Yes, there are many different types of um, level of disability, and it's complicated. But at least there should be a review to improve our social security system and to better meet the needs of PWDs. And there is the need to improve civic education so that people won't discriminate against PWDs. There should be more carnivals for PWDs so that able-bodied people will uh, get a chance to know better PWDs. And uh, so that there will be more activities for PWDs to participate uh, to participate in so that they will not be marginalized. 
I am from the um, Eastern District of the Liberal Society. We also think that Hong Kong is an affluent society. We have the responsibility to take care of the underprivileged so that they can live a dignified life, that they will not be marginalized. We hope the administration will conduct a comprehensive review of support to PWDs and improve um, the systems. Thank you. Next, the Association of Parents of uh, Severely Mentally Handicapped, Mr. Lee Chi Yong. Most of uh, most of uh, severely mentally handicapped people are faced with a lot of difficulties. They incur huge expenses when it comes to um, the medical expenditure, and uh, well, they uh, they. A lot of the parents that they are poor um, middle class. In the report of poverty amongst um, uh, PWDs in 2013, um, there are about uh, 190,000 households uh, that are um, poor with uh, PWDs, which is 45.3 percent. And some people see the PWDs as a burden. We think that uh, they should be allowed to apply for CSSAs on an individual basis. When it comes to disability allowance, DA, well, for those who need a high level of care, uh, we would like them to stay in hospital. And a lot of these places are in the community, and there is a high um, medical expenditure. So the, the current benefit for them is not enough. And for students, SENs uh, who stay in hostels, uh, for for those who attend a five day week, they only go to school for 190 days, and they only stay in a hostel between Monday and Thursday. So half of the time, they are taken care of by their family. Uh, so the expenditure incurred is just as much. This is a double blow to families with a severely uh, with a severely. Um, handicapped people and they have to pass a uh, asset and income test a means test and is uh, the threshold is quite high and the subsidy is very low and very often they don't stay 5 days in hostels or residential care places so they are not eligible for the extra subsidy however um, they still have to live. They even them they're living at home, so the expenditure is still just as high. So the uh, recurrent um, care subsidy should be aligned. Under the CCF, there is the elderly carer subsidy, so that elderly people will be better cared for. However, they have neglected uh, PWD carers. In 2010, on the 8th of February, a motion was endorsed in the panel here to have a carer subsidy for PWDs. Why are they not taken care of? We have some suggestions. First, to increase uh, increase the higher uh, disability allowance, and for those who are staying in hostel, that sh the amount should not be deducted. And then they should be allowed to apply for CSAC on an individual basis, and there should be care uh, subsidy for PWDs under the CCF. And the means test should be relaxed. And uh, disposable income is to be t is to be considered only and only that. And uh, carers. Um, the contribution should be taken into account, and that should be people-oriented support scheme. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Now we have Mr. N. T. Chu from the Concern Group of the Employment of uh, the Disabled and the Chronically Ill. I want to say something about disability allowance. PWDs and the chronically ill will only be eligible if they lost all the both limbs or they have lost 100% of earning capacity for the chronically ill it's not possible that they will lose both uh, limbs it's very difficult for them to apply for DA DA is not an employment subsidy it's for the purpose of meeting expenditure on uh, medicines uh, and e e 
equipment. If the government is not going to pay for these, how can we have find the money to pay for all these items? We do not earn a lot. It may just be five to six thousand dollars a month, and we need to pay ten or twenty thousand dollars for medicines and uh, equipment. So what should we do? Should we just suffer and die? The DA is supposed to help us meeting these uh, expenses. And also, uh, the disabled, uh, the PWDs, are finding it very difficult to uh, find jobs. But they are also they are equally keen on uh, learning and acquiring skills. But the uh, Labor Department Selective Placement Divisions only offer a, a very narrow range of uh, jobs. For example, security. Yeah. And uh, they don't offer jobs like uh, clerks or, or office workers. So for many of these uh, people, they can only hand out uh, leaflets and the flyers on the street to uh, to make a living. PWDs have to work uh, much harder than able-bodied people to acquire the necessary qualifications, but uh, their, their qualifications are ignored by the Labor Department. Well, we all want to get uh, uh, stable jobs so that uh, our parents don't have to worry too much about our future. But the government also uh, invests in uh, training people. What, what, so what should the PWDs who uh, have undergone all the trainings do? Thank you. We have Miss Eva Leung from the Employment Promotion Association of uh, the for the Deaf. Well, we we can we can get the A. I'm a parent of a of a of a deaf person. Uh, it's just the DA is just seventeen hundred dollars. It's very really difficult if you have a child with a hearing disability, and uh, they cannot really find uh, jobs. And even if they hold jobs, they get only the minimum wage. So how how, how much can you spend every day? It's just uh, ten of dollars. What good is it for? They can apply for CSSA if they are not employed, but uh, you have to pass the means test. But not everyone wants to get CSSA. I don't. So we have to support our children. So the uh, CSSA is not an option. I hope uh, PWDs over the age of 18 can be allowed to apply for CSSA uh, on an individual basis, and they should also be uh, given a higher amount of DA. Uh, Mr. Chang Kai, good afternoon, Chairman. I have so many meetings with government officials, and I keep asking the administration to have a quota system for the employment of the disabled. But so far, the administration has failed to address our concerns. I'm very disappointed. I have already said that I'm disappointed, but what I'm have to say today is uh, the uh, flu outbreak, the recent flu outbreak. 
Will the government consider the giving the vaccination to the the PWDs and the elderly? Because this time is serious. Uh, m many elderly persons and even children died. So the administration should do more to help the disabled, offer them flu vaccinations. Well, I I don't mind if you do this uh, for a charge. Because the disabled uh, find it difficult to go to hospitals to get vaccination. The elderly are entitled to the health care uh, voucher. Can we offer the same to the to PWDs? If we go to a government hospital for medical treatment, we have to wait for four to five years. It's really very tough. It's very hard for PWDs. If you offer the disabled uh, healthcare vouchers, they can go to uh, private medical practitioners, and you will spare them from uh, the, the long waiting time in a government hospital. I hope the government would uh, look into this suggestion. Thank you. The fourth right Congress, Mr. Lo Ho Yun. Uh, the, situa the poverty situation of PWD is serious, as other delegations have said. Uh, poverty touches on a number of uh, issues, such as education, uh, employment, and so on and so forth. Today we only have uh, someone from the LWB, but actually uh, the Education Bureau and the Health and Well Food Bureau should be represented here, and we don't even have the Commissioner for Rehab here. This uh, report uh, doesn't really look, uh, address the uh, the needs of uh, the chronically ill and the uh, mentally handicapped and those who are living in uh, hostels. The government should find a way to address uh, these. Uh, people's needs. And it has also said that there are people who are not ec economically active, 6,900 of them. Now, there's no service, no policy to help these people. These uh, PWDs uh, in poverty are said to have no uh, particular needs economically, so the government should find out why and address the issue. And PWDs uh, may have to spend $2,000 on uh, medical services, and to them it's just uh, just like uh, basic needs. And if we uh, calculate the poverty rate uh, based on the uh, criteria for uh, the able-bodied population is not fair. I think we should come up with a benchmark, a, a bottom line, and uh, we should take into account that the uh, medical expenses of PWDs in drawing the line. So, for the calculation of poverty rate, uh, the Costs on the medical services incurred by PWD should be the taken on board, and many PWDs would like to work, and they would uh, only apply for social benefits if uh, they have no other choice. But uh, there is no; uh, they are not given facilitation in terms of uh, job quotas or tax incentive. We have been asking for this for years, and for the tax incentive, uh, it's actually in the CE's uh, manifesto. And also for CSSA's uh, calculation of uh, 
non-deductible, uh, non-deducted uh, income uh, is very harsh. So that they're caught uh, in a dilemma that uh, as, we, as to whether they should work or not. They should uh, look at uh, the uh, specific needs of different uh, groups of PWDs. Next with Mr. Andy Chan from VTV. A uh, few minutes is barely sufficient for addressing poverty situation of PWDs. Uh, poverty is a situation they are always uh, facing. It's not uh, just uh, for the short uh, duration of a meeting like this. I'm a social worker of a VTV television network for PWDs. Many PWDs uh, are quite capable to work, and there are there are many talents. So why are they unemployed? But I think the government takes the lead, so to speak, to discriminate against PWDs because of the policies they implement. Uh, PWDs uh, can be independent and be self-sufficient if they are employed. Why do I say that the government is the number one culprit in discrimination? In a in a election forum, the Mr. C. Y. Leung uh, talked to us. He said uh, after he assumed office, he would uh, implement a policy so that the government would employ two percent of uh, PWDs as civil servants, and then a study will be conducted in to, uh, in uh, in providing tax incentive for the employers. So what has happened to the promised uh, studies? On average, 16.7% can uh, enter the civil service system, but uh, there are more people leaving the government annually than those joining. And and uh, the figure also includes the uh, exist uh, incumbent civil servants who be have become uh, disabled as defined because of the deteriorating physical conditions. That's uh, really unf unfair in calculation in in the way it's, it calculates the uh, employment figures. So as for subvented organisations. Is there a requirement on the employment of uh, PWDs? There's no indicator, and even where where indicators are promulgated, they are for reference only. We have uh, talked to many government officials, and still in 2015 we are not seeing any progress. Public sector organisations and the government are not doing anything. Are not doing anything more to help PWDs. I have two requests. First, government departments should employ two percent of PWDs, and stick to that, and just don't juggle with the figures. And the administration should require subvented public bodies to announce the indicators and update them every year, and update them every year. And there should be studies conducted by the government so that PWDs can effectively integrate into society. Thank you. Next is a Hong Kong Federation of the Blind, Mr. Shing Li Lim. We only have three minutes, and uh, we're we're an organisation that's been in operation for forty u forty two years. We work for the blind. For those that are between uh, 40, 40, 18 and 60, with a policy intervention, the poverty rate is still 24.2%, which is higher than um, that of able bodies, a difference of 2.3 times. How come that uh, even when they uh, are economically active, they 
are still poor. Let me tell you. As Mr. Chen said, it's a matter of whether the administration has taken the lead to employ more PWDs, and the figures are inflated. In between 2002 and 2012, we have conducted the survey of the change of number of PWDs in the civil service, and we found that, on average, every year among the new recruits, there are about 17.8. But there are 169 every year leaving. For serving civil servants who have who are turned uh, disabled, including those uh, who are suffering from chronic um, illness, 140. So for every um, new recruit of PWDs, uh, about a hundred left. I came to the LegCo in 2008. The administration said that they employed 2%. However, that's how they arrive at the 2%. We only look at the average figure of the past 10 years. So 17 people uh, a new, uh, will join every year, but over 100 people leave. Is it the case that there are less PWDs in the government? If the government does not take the lead, it's destructive because uh, private sectors will, uh, private sectors and also um, the public sector will uh, look up to the government. If the government does not do it right, then it will fail. If you just um, window dress, the problem will never be resolved. That's why there are more poor people among uh, working PWDs than uh, working able-bodied people. I now turn to the uh, CSSA with the deducted with the uh, deducted income for PWDs who are working. There should be a grace period of two years so that they can focus on their uh, career. Most of them are um, piano tuners, they are masters, and they are um, working in some other jobs. And if they're given two years so that uh, they can still uh, uh, receive CSSA, it will be beneficial to them and society as well. The Hong Kong Red Cross uh, John Kennedy Center Alumni Association, Mr. Leung Men Tai. According to the poverty report, for those between the 18 and 60, there are 700,000. About uh, 40,000 of them are poor people. Well, if even if they have carers at home, over 20% of them uh, think that it, they still have difficulties uh, getting through life. So poor PWDs uh, families face more difficulties, and there should be living subsidy for carers of PWDs. Currently, they only cover uh, care of elderly people. You can imagine if. Sick family members will get uh, well, will be cared for by outside help. Then some other people can go to the carers can go out to work. We have interviewed over six hundred people with disabilities. Seventy percent of them have been unemployed for uh, over a year. Forty percent over five years. Forty percent of PWDs who are unemployed think that it's because of their disability that they are unemployed. 20% of them think that they are concerned about um, the burden on their families, and that's why they've given up looking for a job. So disability is uh, related to whether a household is poor. Well, the unemployment rate among PWD is 100% uh, more than able body. So we, you need to help PWDs find jobs. After the hearing last time, um, 
Well, the panel was concerned about integrate uh, about uh, inclusive education. Those PWDs who are who don't have a tertiary education um, will meet with are meet are met with more difficulties. We have uh, the following suggestions. There should be legislation of uh, for quota. And it's been practiced overseas and proved to be effective. The administration should not just quote um, examples that are failed. They should start with uh, policy studies, and there should be tax incentive for employers who employ PWDs. The productive productivity assessment mechanism will not be a, uh, should not be abused. Well, uh, if they're assessed to be able to receive uh, the statutory minimum wage, PWDs will have to produce a, a medical certificates to ask for another assessment. There should be CSSAs for um, families with PWDs. Under the CCF, uh, CARA subsidies for PWDs should be given. If carers get support, then the PWDs can stay at home. This will alleviate the pressure of residential places. Next, the Labour Party. According to the 2013 Poverty Report, before policy interve intervention, uh, the uh, rate, poverty rate is 45.3%. After policy intervention, 29.5%. Education, employment, transportation, discrimination are all matters that are at play. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, med um, expenditures related to uh, medicine and uh, rehabilitation devices. Well, you only take into account income without taking it into account medical expenditure. That is unfair because we have to pay a lot for these. Do you know that? You know how much uh, an and uh, electric uh, wheelchair cost and two uh, two pairs of tires. Well, for the wheelchair is um, over a hundred thousand dollars. For the wheels, uh, for the tires, it cost four thousand dollars. I think uh, you only know may you may only know when you are wheelchair bound. You may say there are a lot of schemes and subsidies available, but they are not from the government. They are not public money. If we want to get uh, government uh, help, we will ha the whole family will have to receive CSSA because it's on a household basis when it comes to application and not on an individual basis. For those who are severely handicapped, among the seven million people, we are one of them. How come the funds available in the in the public outside the government is better? PWDs don't make much, and very often one parent will have to uh, quit the job and stay at home. Sometimes they work so hard. That uh, they are impaired physically in in one way or another, say suffering from uh, muscle pain. Able-bodied siblings will have to start work early so that uh, they can make a bit more money towards our uh, ancillary equipment because the application is only available once a year. Sometimes uh, my, the brothers and sisters, after they finish work, they will have to help the parent to take care of the disabled sibling. And when PWDs, when there is a PWD at home, um, care is continuous. The government does not have multi-pronged approach to help us. There are more help available outside the government. So the Labour Party thinks 
that a CSSA on a household basis should be changed to individual basis for PWDs, so that uh, so that PWDs can get get government help, and there should be um, carer subsidy for PWDs. And there should be genuine and real long-term policies to support PWDs so that they can lead a dignified life that uh, that is respected. Next, Democratic Party, Mr. Andrew Wen. Just now, a number of um, deputations quoted the poverty report among PWDs of 2013, I'm not going to go into details because we all know about the gravity of the situation. The difference is um, 2.5 times between PWDs and able-bodied and the able-bodied. We have a number of suggestions. Under the statutory minimum wage, because of the productivity assessment, uh, some PWDs receive less. There should be a uh, wage subsidy so that uh, they can take home the same amount of wage, just like those working uh, minimum wage. And there should be studies to look into. Uh, whether a system of um, employment quota should be put in place. The current figure is inflated. I'm not going to talk about the two percent. They don't. They are not an ex. They are not. They don't lead by example. NGOs don't stick to that figure, and it should be implemented by phases. So there will be a voluntary indicator, and then eventually legislate for it. The chief executive, in his manifesto, talk about tax concessions. With tax concession and the indicator, um, it will be, be much better. Carers have to quit their job, and they have to care for PWD long term. They face um, a lot of pressure. Physically and mentally, there should be care subsidy available for them. Uh, the CSSA system should be improved. I'm not going to repeat it. We emphasize on the ch on the uh, the change of the CSSA system because for a family with PWDs, uh, one family member will have to be the carer. So the number of people working is reduced. If they're not uh, given more subsidies, then the, there is more chance that they will um, fall into poverty. And in the policy address, it says that uh, starting from 2015 and uh, 2016, there should be a general mainstream uh, checklist. The needs of PWDs should also be um, made mainstream, make it a policy. International standards should be taken into account. The definition of disability should be changed because the current indicator is uh, too old. It's been over 40 years. You will have to lose um, all limbs before you are classified as uh, disabled. But when it comes to um, those who suffer from the loss of single limb, they already face a lot of difficulties in finding a job. We need to give them hope. Now we have Mr. Alex Chan from Hong Kong Pride Union. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chan, you can sit down. Well, I just want to stand up so that everyone can see me. I'm a visually impaired person. How, how much sight do you do you think I enjoy? You think, may think that I can see things. Well, I'm legally blind, but it's not uh, a condition from since my birth. You don't know how much eyesight I still have. It's just I uh, you can't see it. Uh, 
any sign of uh, from my uh, appearance. Just and uh, we don't see anything uh, on the part of the administration to, that would help us get out of poverty. One of the important things for this to happen is to have uh, the visually impaired person to uh, have jobs. Uh, we have a member who who is a visually impaired person. He now works as a teacher. But because of his uh, blindness, uh, at first uh, no one offered him a job. He uh, has proved himself to be uh, a capable teacher after six years. And in 2013, he uh, was recruited by the government, but he he had to wait for 40 months. He received a letter telling him that uh, you have uh, passed the test, but there's no uh, job position for you for the time being. So he waited for 40 months. So when the uh, the government uh, already weren't the government ready when the, the offer was made? In in that uh, there are positions for people like him. And then uh, in another case, a visually impaired person was offered a job uh, as a uh, working as a courier. I, I, I don't know how he can do the job. And then another visually impaired person uh, who has uh, 30 to 40 percent of uh, of eyesight left. So the the point is uh, when you uh, offer jobs to the visually impaired, you should uh, uh, do the matching to appropriately. Uh, Mr. Chen Shipen from New People's Party. PWDs uh, find it difficult to get jobs because of the physical conditions. It's a 22.4 percent, the poverty rate of those in the age group 18 to 64. Many of these people can work and are willing to work. Because of their disabilities, uh, they they are not uh, employed, and they are not getting proper uh, employment support, and that's why they are in poverty. So the MPP is the view that uh, in, in instead of giving them some allowance, we should uh, help them find jobs so that they can. Uh, be self-sufficient. Their their talents can be the useful. They are free the counselling and job placement service uh, offered by the labour department. But the labour department uh, is not uh, proactive, as some other deputations have told you. And there's a lack of coordination between the labour department and the social welfare departments, uh, and that's why. PWDs are not getting all the help they need. Uh, both the LD and the SWD offer um, training services for PWDs and also the cash incentive to employers of uh, PWDs. But the, the, the amount is different. One is uh, what one half of uh, the wage. One is the one third, and one, and they have different uh, uh, trial periods, uh, six months under one, and three months under the other, and uh, the SWD would do is uh, matching, and the cases are now referred by the uh, selective placement division of uh, the labor department. If I am an employer. Which department should I approach if I want to employ PWDs? And there are dedicated support uh, programs for 
PWD is uh, seeking employment, but, but they're they are scattered all over the place, and it's difficult for employers to choose. There should be better coordination, and because of the lack of publicity, employers uh, are at a loss where, where where to go. There should be a interdepartmental unit to coordinate the placement services, and there should be better services in. Uh, Matching uh, job vacancies with uh, PWDs. Uh, Miss Lamling, many uh, households with uh, PWDs uh, lament that uh, just they are in poverty because they have a member who is a PWD. There's a lack of proper long-term planning, so they face chronic shortage of uh, hostel places and support uh, measures. And their family members have to take care of uh, PWD family members, and the carers themselves cannot take up employment. Let me share with you a a, a, a case. As a couple, the uh, husband suffers from a severe st a stroke. Uh, he's in his forties. He becomes bedridden, and uh, the wife. Cannot uh, take care of him, and uh, she tried to get a hostel place for her husband, but there's a shortage in the subvented sector, and uh, she tries to find one in the private sector. Well, but uh, the husband was only is only in his forties, so he's not old enough to qualify for a place in some private homes. But uh, when they when she approaches SWDs, uh, they said the hostels cannot take care of uh, a person with uh, so severe a disability. So uh, the husband has to be taken care of by the wife, uh, even though when he returns to his home, his skull bone was still uh, not fully grown back. And uh, the wife has to take take up the role as the carer. Actually, the the husband used to be the breadwinner of the family, and uh, and the family uh, f is facing financial difficulties because they live on uh, savings. Uh, the wife, uh, at some point, uh, wanted to go out to get a job, but uh, she cannot bear. Uh, the idea that uh, there's there's no one to take care of her, her husband, so there should be a uh, long-term planning for uh, for care and support for PWDs, and also to the provide better support uh, to carers and to re help them relieve the pressure they face. We hope that one day. The allowance for the carer will be extended to uh, carers of PWDs, and the government should also uh, embark on the long-term planning of uh, rehab uh, services. Mr. Chan Chi Kin, good afternoon. Here, we are having a discussion on uh, employment of PWDs. Well, I'm one of them. Some of them can work. Uh, you may wonder what disabilities I have. I'm an ex mentally ill. I suffer from serious uh, depression and uh, also from uh, psychosis. Uh, it's a miracle that I can uh, come here to to uh, speak. And uh, I thank all the members who have stayed behind to listen to me. There are six of them. I hope, uh, Chairman, you would allow me ample time to say what I have to say. The government uh, has published the Hong Kong Poverty Situation Report on Disability 2013. Uh, some of the points have been missed by other deputations, for apart from the chronically ill and the, the residents of uh, homes and hostels, 
who are not covered by the <coughs> report. The report also failed to cover any mentally the incapacitated person. There are 21,700 person. They estimate that there are another 70 to 100,000 uh, PWDs uh, apart from those on the register which who uh, uh, make up the 30,000 odd population. It's been said that the, the PWDs are facing financial uh, difficulties well, it's not just affected by the income, but other necessary expenses. Some other deputations have talked about what those necessary expenses are, and also the thematic uh, household surveys that do not collect data on uh, PWDs uh, expenses on these subjects. So, what's the thematic uh, survey for? And the report devotes a lot of uh, paragraph to uh, recurrent cash inter policy intervention, but under theme three point one, a non cash policy intervention. If you look closely, they are talking about public rental housing. So giving a PRH unit. To a PWD would uh, drastically uh, alleviate poverty among PWDs. So the government is trying to hide the facts from you and mislead you. Uh, if I may be given a little bit more time, uh, please wrap up. I want to say something about DA. I am a recipient of DA. First, there's a long queue. You have to queue up. You have to go to a hospital to prove that you are mentally ill. For non-emergency cases, the waiting time can be as long as two years. Well, I was an acute case. I, I waited for two weeks because I committed suicide. So I was admitted to the hospital system. And then after a wait of several months, a num uh, 22 months, I was qualified. So you are at this a PWD, uh, and you, it takes 22 months for me to, to to be qualified. Even though I was mentally ill, I hope government officials would uh, look. Look to your conscience. Do you have the heart in your report? Mr. Tang Siu Chung, good afternoon. Uh, I have, uh, I'm hearing, in, hearing impaired. I'll ask my interpreter to help me. When I was three, I had a fever, and my, I was then, therefore hearing impaired. I. I went to a mainstream school, light able bodied uh, students. Uh, the school I entered a mainstream uh, school, but there was no training provided by my school. So I uh, sort of uh, they they dreamed when I went to school, and then I had to get a tuition tutor, one on one doing tuition for me when I grew up when I was in form five. Uh, the uh, curriculum uh, became more difficult for me. Even tuition uh, couldn't help, and I didn't good, get good grades in my certificate examination. I repeated uh, form five, and still the grades uh, were not good. And then I joined an IV program. Uh, it's a diploma course for on accounting. IV has 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 a very different environment from a secondary school. Even my the classmates could not help me. There was no support, and then uh, I sort of uh, 
dream all the time. And after three months, I couldn't cope, and I uh, I, I quit. What I want to say is that uh, the government do not provide support for those who are hearing hearing impaired. Say, for example, sign language interpretation service, note taking service. There is no Chinese subtitle on the screen. For a lot of those people with hearing impairment, they can't catch up. They're forced to give up their studies, and they have wasted a lot of time. When it comes to education, because of the low education level, they can't find jobs. For those with associate degree, uh, for those uh, with hearing impairment, there uh, there is a less than um, one percent. They earn a very sm uh, low wage. They continue to be poor. I hope the government will put more resources in education and employment support to help those with hearing and impairment to improve and raise their education level so that they can find good jobs and they can get out of poverty. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tang. And thank you, Ms. Ma. Next, Ms. Li Mei Yin. When you lose your job, people think that uh, uh, you are poor. The government uh, should do something to create more jobs. It seems that the administration thinks that uh, social enterprises is the panacea, but social enterprises usually close after three to seven years. How many of these enterprises help PWDs uh, to join the labor force? and say find a job in the private sector? Is it the case that um, NGO as vented organizations and the government by creating a lot of social enterprises they can uh, solve the property problem amount PWDs? A lot of the um, disabled staff of social enterprises um, do not enjoy the statutory minimum wage because there is the productivity assessment Employers are protected by the by the law to continue to uh, exploit PWDs by not giving them minimum wage. Yes, the productivity assessment was put in place to help PWDs, but this is suppression and exploitation. It should be described. It should be scrapped immediately so that PWDs can enjoy minimum wage. I work on the mainland, and I know that uh, for mainland uh, laws, uh, they have an employment quota, which is 1.5 percent of the total uh, of the strength. You see that um, when it comes to the relevant legislation of the mainland, it states that uh, the government, the the country, will provide um, tax incentives uh, for. Enterprises that employ PWDs. I work in um, mainland enterprises and Hong Kong enterprises uh, to implement this piece of legislation. We help enterprises uh, to recruit PWDs so that they don't have to pay uh, a fine. In its stead, there are a lot of Taiwanese enterprises and Hong Kong enterprises employ a certain percentage of PWDs. In the organization I work for, employed uh, 10,000 uh, staff members, and over 150 of them are PWDs. We have uh, about 15% um, of them that are hearing em uh, employed. They work in the assembly line, packaging. Assembly, etc. There are three hundred and twenty thousand SMEs in Hong Kong, ninety eight percent, 
and employing um, over 50 percent of the labor force. If we encourage these uh, private enterprises to employ PWDs by giving them tax incentive and support, and on top of that, uh, the government may require uh, enterprises or employing uh, over 150 people to employ at least one PWDs, then immediately there can be uh, tens of thousands of jobs created for PWDs. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Next is Hong Kong Neuromuscular uh, Disease As Association. Oh, he's not here. The next is uh, Dr. Donna Wong. I think uh, the um, the selective placement uh, division of the Labor Department should be disbanded because it doesn't operate on any principle. If it can, if it's allowed to continue to operate, uh, no support will be given to PWDs. Mr. Chang of the New People Party mentioned about different areas that is um, uh, um, ERBs, uh, IV, uh, I, um, VTC, and um, vocational training. There should be re reconfiguration of resources. The objective of the establishment of these uh, institutes are quite fragmented, and there should be life planning, not like the, the one in pri in secondary school. A lot of people uh, uh, suffer from disability uh, that are not inherent, and they should be given support. There is a report of the OECD, Sickness, Disability and Work Breaking the Barriers. There are a lot of proposals targeting different countries. It's not just about welfare. PWDs should be allowed to work, and there should be a work benefit package. Subsidy will, should be given to them. Before I came here, I was very worried that after we have spoken, they will only uh, say exactly the same thing that they've said before. I asked, I asked uh, political parties and lawmakers to read in detail the OECD report. We're talking about over thirty countries of the OECD. They uh, notice about the employment difficulties and poverty problem of PWDs, then they make a list of suggestions. We have the money. Um, there is a lot of money in the VTC and in the ERB, but they are not used in the right uh, area. They continue to operate idly. You are given, you are referred a job. But they are not properly trained. And there should be uh, prevention of, um, dis of disability. Some people may think that the percentage of PWD is small. In 2009, John Zhang suffered uh, from a kind of stroke, but because of the angioplasty, um, he Continue to work in 2010. Uh, Doctor uh, Mr. Michael Sun uh, suffered from renal illnesses, but he continued to work in the government. Able-bodied people can over a night turn into PWD. Say, for example, professional drivers and um, cardiovascular um, uh, diseases uh, attack. Middle the middle age, and sometimes um, at the early stage, people try to put up with it, and when and until it's uh, too late. Employers use the employees, work them to the bones, and then 
left them to their own devices. There should be a new rehabilitation policy formulated. The Commissioner for Rehabilitation told us clearly that、uh, it will not happen in the coming two years. And I think、uh, we should all work together, lawmakers and、uh, government. Don't think that、uh, PWDs are someone else, because overnight, in the near future, you fall sick, you may become disabled, and in the end, you will die. Amongst the challenges, the society should work together. We're not talking about a small group of people, but Everyone in society. Thank you. Next is、uh, Mr. Kim Kang from First Step Association. Thank you. When it comes to poverty amount、uh, PWDs for those who are physically disabled, well,、uh, is、uh, is the、um, critical point for them. I'm not going to elaborate on the report. First, I'd like to talk about the DA system. The guideline of、um, Social benefit for DA is、uh, to meet special needs as a result of a severe disability. What's meant by that? The positioning of DA is very vague. Well, we want more a better service for PWDs. The government told us that there is the DA, and when we want、um, some、uh, subsidy for consumables, they talk about the DA. I don't. I didn't expect the government will say that the DA is a form of support for poverty problems. One of us、uh, talked about、um, expensive、uh, rehabilitate rehabilitative devices. Say, well, sixty thousand for electric、um, wheelchair and、uh, and. And another wheelchair for shower. So about five years, you will have to spend ninety thousand dollars. So you have to use the entirety of the DA on these、uh, devices. So there is nothing left to lift them out of poverty. And the the twenty thirteen report.、Uh, there is an, no、um, base. There there are a lot of things that are excluded in the calculation of the poverty rate. So it's unfair. Say. One hundred percent disability. The standard rate is three thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. For one P poverty line is three thousand five hundred. So it's more or less as the standard rate. But don't forget, when you receive a CSSA, you have subsidy to procure consumables to help with transportation. So you will get about seven to nine thousand dollars for one single person. But、uh, seven to nine thousand is a two P poverty line. For PWDs who can't get CSSA, the、uh, figures won't reflect the situation accurately. If a PWD receives only three thousand dollars, I think that person is long dead. And there is some kind of charter. The Talent Wise Charter involving three hundred organisations, and I counted about eighty-seven percent of the organisations are actually、uh, units in the government, and I haven't counted、um, what office and、uh, NGOs. So how useful is this charter? How many private companies participated? We have some suggestions. Four. CSSA should be individual basis, as per the recommendation of the 2012、um, uh, report, and there should be support fund for the transition period before PWD ca、uh, can get DA. And the、uh, employment quota is the third one, and the fourth one is.、Uh, Care subsidy for PWDs should be put in place as soon as possible. Have new member of the Ouyang Fong Chairman. We have Ms. Ouyang Fong Chairman. I retired for two years. We have new member of the Ouyang Fong Chairman. I retired for two years. We have new member of the Ouyang Fong Chairman. I retired for two years. We have new member of the Ouyang Fong Chairman. I retired for two years. We have new member of the Ouyang Fong Chairman. I retired for two years. We have new member of the Ouy
My daughter has been receiving training at shelter workshop for 10 to 15 years. Recently, she applied for CSSA. My uh, burden was le has been lessened, but uh, our family has been broken up. Article 28 of the Convention on the Rights of the Disabled, there should be proper social benefits. Mm -hmm. Our mentally incapacitated uh, children get training in shelter workshops. They are not employers. They don't enjoy MPF, no medical insurance, no retirement benefits, and they only get $1,000, uh, in, uh, including government's uh, incentive allowance. They don't even get a basic living subsidy, and they cannot uh, get CSSA. Uh, they cannot get more training allowance by working over time. They are on on training for life, so they are deprived of the right to employment. There's also a discriminatory uh, productivity assessment mechanism for open employment. Most uh, mentally the incapacitated persons cannot get the minimum wage. So uh, their, uh, their labor is not protected, and they're always under the poverty line. For those who are suffering from um, mental incapacitation, they don't get uh, suitable training courses. They, they, they don't have opportunities and, or time to, to further study their studies. So they will always be poor. Uh, lastly, I would like to uh, ask that a commission on the rights of PWDs be set up so that there will be proper policy planning and the human rights of uh, PWDs can be safeguarded. N lastly, we have Mr. Chan Chun Kit from Chosen Power, People First, Hong Kong. I'm here to speak on behalf of the uh, uh, mentally uh, incapacitated persons. Uh, I hope you would uh, also uh, read our submissions so that you know the, the experience of a fellow PWDs. Among the PWDs, the uh, mentally incapacitated persons suffer the highest difficulties and problems. It's not just a question of uh, whether they have they can hold jobs. There are the problems that they have to face: uh, healthcare, education. And uh, it's even for them to get to set up a bank account. It's difficult for them. Uh, from the administration administration team we have today, uh, we know that uh, they, um, they still regard uh, the. Poverty problem of PWDs as a welfare issue or whether this is an employment issue is a waste of the many the insightful the views offered here. We are not here just talking about employment. So I hope the administration will set up a dedicated committee for PWDs. They should take a look at all the poverty alleviation measures from the human rights perspective. And the principles and uh, protections offered in the Convention of the Right of the PWD should be upheld. But, but poverty problem can be addressed easily. We have been ignored. No one cares to consult us over what we want. If we are admitted to a hostel or a home, then all the, our problems become the resource problem. 
of uh, the hostels. We are also uh, among the poor. Just one more point. It's been often said that uh, knowledge can change your fate. But what kind of educations do the mentally incapacitated persons get? We've been asking people to to be a lifelong learner. But all, all opportunities are there for people like us after we have uh, left school for lifelong learning. And there should be a simplified version uh, for people suffering from mental incapacitation incapacity and the uh, productivity assessment mechanism under the minimum wage system uh, doesn't really help us it should be scrapped and you should also to provide the uh, statistics and data on uh, this particular group of PWDs so that we know how to address the problems thank you uh, so some 30 deputations have um, spoken. I'll ask the administration to respond. And as some deputations have pointed out, we are we find it uh, regrettable that uh, from we just have someone from LWB and SWD, and not we don't even have the commissioner for rehab. And not no one from the Food and Health Bureau is regrettable. The deputations have raised a number of uh, questions and made uh, a number of uh, suggestions covering employment, employment quota, tax incentive, reform to CSSA, uh, including the improvement to the uh, tax uh, the uh, the uh, income. Detectable amount, mentally ill, the rehab, planning, education opportunities, and other support measures. So I would like the administration to provide a response before I open the floor for members to raise questions. Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I'd like to thank the Council and members for arranging a meeting today so that we can have a discussion on uh, PWDs and poverty. And I, ho I thank all the deputations, the stakeholders for providing constructive suggestions and views. Uh, they provide a lot of uh, food for thought. It's uh, one of the main uh, focuses of this administration that we should help the disadvantaged and the poor. If we look at the expenditure side in the past couple of years, in 2007-2008, we're talking about 16.6 billion in total expenditure. This year, it's a 26.6 billion dollars or an increase of 60%. If we look at welfare, i.e., services, the uh, expenditure has gone up from 07-08, 2.8 billion dollars to 5.1 billion dollars this year, an increase of 82 uh, percent. I provide these figures to illustrate that, that this is one of the important emphasis of the work of the government, and I would also like to refer members to a thematic household survey conducted by the CNSD in 2012 and also the economic analysis of business facilitation unit of the financial services 
a financial secretary's office has conducted a study focusing on poverty faced by PWDs. As the chairman has said, poverty rate uh, is higher than the general rate both before and after policy intervention. But our cash policy intervention is, e is effective in reducing the poverty rate from 45% to 29.5%, a, a drop of 15.8%. Uh, is much more effective than the general poverty alleviation as a whole. We have a look at a number of age groups in order that we can provide appropriate support or financial support to different groups. For the elderly over the age of 65, among the poverty pof population, some actually the, for those who are poor, among the, the, the poor PWDs, 70% uh, of them are over 65. That's on par with the general population. The OALA and the uh, OAA have been able to help these uh, elderly PWDs. Actually, 95% of these uh, elderly PWDs are benefited from uh, OALA, OAA, or DA. We will, of course, continue to provide financial support. And uh, we have been also talking about how best we can provide better support to the retired el elderly population. As for the long term service planning and community support, is it will be strengthened, it will remain a focus and a focal area for us. For children in poverty, uh, the poverty rate uh, is more or less the same as the general children population. But uh, young PWDs uh, need more support and services, especially uh, preschool rehab services. And we are working hard on uh, improving the service. So there are 6,200 places and 6,000 are on the waiting list. But of course, uh, places will be uh, released uh, when they reach uh, the school age. But uh, the uh, demand is high. We would uh, enhance uh, the uh, service. We will provide more places for preschool services. We have uh, earmarked uh, sites to provide additionally for 1,470 places. And we have a special scheme for welfare use uh, involving private sites. Th th there will be 5,000 places, but that would uh, come on stream uh, gradually. But that takes time. That's why under the CCF, we provide training to, uh, subsidy to low-income families so that these uh, children, while they are waiting for the service to be provided, can get an allowance to get uh, the necessary services from NGOs. And this has been regularized. In this year's policy address, uh, it has been announced that we uh, would like to emphasize on the importance of early intervention. There will be um, home visits to provide pre uh, primary rehabilitation services. Say, for example, uh, in kindergartens or childcare centers. 
staff of these places will receive proper training. After they have been identified, um, the PWDs will receive such service in the child care center or kindergarten. And this will uh, alleviate the uh, problem of long waiting time and at the same time will help parents in one way or another. This is something we will continue to work on. A number of People focus on the PWDs between the age of uh, 18 and 64. The poverty rate is 22.4%, which is about 100% higher than, the, than that of able body. That is about 10.5%. We see that there is a special need for this group of people. The unemployment rate was 6.7%, uh, which is higher than the 3.7% for able-bodied. And in 2006 and 2007, there was a topical study um, of um, PWDs. At that time, the uh, unemployment rate was 11.1%, uh, which is 4. Point, which um, as compared to the general unemployment rate, 4.3%. We see that uh, there is a there is indeed an urgent need for this group of people. In the past two or three years, we have some new schemes put in place. Uh, say, for example, when it comes to uh, employment for uh, PWDs, we provide incentive for employers. Over a six-month period, every month, $4,000 will be given to P employers so that opportunities will be given to PWDs in 2013. And the scheme has been improved uh, to extend the period by two months. SMEs, when they employ PWDs, they may have to procure special devices or equipment, say, for example, for uh, those with uh, um, visual impairment and, a, and a, magnifi a magnifying device. Sorry, I have to interrupt you because you're just listing out what is contained in the paper. I've read it, and I believe that uh, most of us have read it. Just now, the uh, speakers have touched on a number of specific issues. I remember the New People Party and Dr. Wong talked about uh, reconfiguration and or consolidation of uh, services. We have a very little time. We only have about an hour, and you're only citing what's contained in the in the paper. I have outlined the proposals and views of uh, of speakers. Would you have any response? If you don't, then I will open the floor for members. Well, yes. Uh, I just gave you the background information because uh, it's related to our consideration. We have some employment support measures. Just now, some deputations mentioned about social enterprises. And uh, under our uh, schemes, uh, there are 96 projects providing an additional 965 uh, jobs. 675 of them are for PWDs. We focus our work on employment too. Whether it is the CCF, the Rehabilitation Advisory Committee, or the uh, Commission on Poverty, we will continue to listen to your views, and uh, hopefully we'll, we will find other targeted measures to strengthen our service. Well, I will... Um, give brief uh, responses uh, to the measures outlined. First, tax concessions. We've spoken to the FSTB.
we have a low tax rate in Hong Kong. Well, 90% of the enterprises don't have to pay tax. And when it comes to um, taxable profit, wages are excluded. If further tax con uh, concessions are given, does it really help uh, encourage employers to employ PWDs? It's doubtful. If we want to provide incentive for employers, well, we thought that uh, in 2013, instead of um, the unverified benef the unverified uh, tax uh, concession, well, we will have um, the strengthened uh, scheme to ex of the uh, support scheme of. Um, of the work orientation and placement scheme, and um, there is an uh, also a, a, a additional support under the scheme given to employers. The International Labour um, Organization and the European Commission have conducted studies when it comes to employment quotas. It's not always effective in all countries. Maybe it's um, successful in Taiwan. We prove we we have an open mind, but we know that for some places that may, may not be effective. There are many different systems. Some in the form of a fine. Some PWDs are employed not to work, but just to uh, avoid to to meet the requirement. PWDs should be employed for their for their ability, not for their disability. Um, because otherwise, it will be more difficult for PWDs to integrate. We have that charter, talent-wise employment charter. We know that um, we need to strengthen it. Currently, there are 380 organizations. Most of them are government departments because they are required to do so, and we encourage um, public bodies to participate. We also encourage private companies to participate. We know that for the business sector, uh, there are a lot of caring employers. And at the same time, there are some that are doubtful. But we would like them to participate first, so that at least it's a start, uh, and it and it will be strengthened uh, later. We are looking into strengthening the scheme to make it more effective. And just now, the um, government departments and civil servants are mentioned. The policy the itself is very clear. We understand that uh, if we are to implement a policy when it comes to um, human resources, we we need the uh, the companies to understand. Our policies and how to effectively implement implement them. We see that in 2011, 2012, 2013, there are about 30 PWDs. It's increased to 80 last year. So there is an increase. If we can in, um, enhance the understanding of human resources, then it's uh, it's important. We would like to do better. Someone mentioned. Some people mentioned about the carers subsidy. As you know, that under the CCF, for carers of elderly people, there is a pilot scheme. 
It was launched in June last year. It will last for two years. We won't wait till the till the end for a review. We'll review its effectiveness, whether to regularize it, and we will definitely look into whether it should be extended to carers for severely disabled people. At the end of last year, the Hong Kong U was uh, commissioned to conduct the review. I believe that uh, the 2013 report is of uh, high reference value. In the past two years, we have increased the number of respite service and the manpower of the um, parent support center, district centers, and we spent two hundred million dollars to regularize us, um, some services. <laughs> and we also um, use uh, case managers in some of the schemes to provide better care service. A number of deputations mentioned about CSSA whether PWDs uh, are allowed to apply on an individual basis. CSSA is based uh, upon the, the concept of household. This is because this is conducive uh, to encouraging family members to take care of one another. Changing it to an individual basis uh, will, uh, will involve a a complete change of the system with far reaching implications. Instead of changing everything, perhaps uh, we can put in place some targeted schemes. Well, for those with a severe physical disability, we have uh, regularized a subsidy scheme to uh, provide subsidy for breathing devices. We have this scheme, which is outside the CSS, uh, the social security system. We need more targeted schemes and measures because it will be more pragmatic and feasible. That's all for my response. I will, um, we, we can have a detailed discussion about areas that you're, that is, that are close to your heart. I'll reflect your view to the relevant um, task force under the Commission on Poverty. Mr. Fong, when it comes to matters related to the SWD, I'll go back and consider them, and I would like to give a response. The fourth right caucus um, mentioned about the case. Perhaps uh, I will give you more information. The lady talked about the case that. And the situation outlined was before assistance uh, has been received. And I think for that case, um, uh, a home care service has started every week. There is physiotherapy service and caring service given to the family. And the husband has applied for CSSA on uh, an individual basis, although he is living with a family. It shows that we really would like to help, and there is flexibility in the um, social security system so that we can exercise uh, discretion to help households in need. For those with severe disability that are living in the community, 
there are new services available to them. Say, for example, some uh, comp uh, integrated care service, a home care service, and we hope to help them. So these are uh, support the measures that we provide, uh, and uh, some deputations have mentioned uh, medical uh, funds outside the government. Well, they supplement government uh, funds. Uh, there are Yan Chai and uh, other funds, private funds, which can or uh, help uh, PWDs to buy the equipment or to hire services. Uh, these funds supplement those in the government. Sometimes when government funds cannot uh, cover certain cases, these uh, non-government funds uh, would uh, play a very good uh, complementary role. Some uh, deputations have uh, said that 70% uh, of SC uh, collapsed ultimately, starting from uh, 2000. And ten, we have supported ninety social enterprises. But social enterprises are facing the competition in the market. As of so far, some twenty of them have uh, folded up, and some seventy percent of them have to be closed upon the expiry of uh, leases. Usually, they will hire. Premises in hospitals or commercial properties, uh, they and they will come to an the lease will come when the lease come to an end, they cannot continue. And sometimes they have to uh, close their business because of losses incurred. And uh, we of course want to have more SEs which can provide job opportunities for PWDs. Uh, the social welfare department has devoted a lot of resources in uh, running sh uh, shelter workshop, uh, workshops and rehab services for those suffering from uh, severe mental han handicaps and uh, or physical handicap. We provide training so that one day they may be able to go for open employment. And uh, even for those who may not be able to get a job in the open market, we would like to provide training to sustain their working ability and uh, and and to enable them to uh, to live in the community. As regards our on-the-job training and uh, our counseling services and how we can. Tie in with the uh, with similar programs offered by the uh, labor department. Well, I'll, go, I'll I'll look into those to see how we can better coordinate with uh, labor department programs after the meeting. And uh, there's a suggestion that we should uh, lengthen the support period up to three years after. A placement has been made. Well, the consideration here is that we want to get the best value for the uh, expenditure we incur in providing the services. So this must be considered on an uh, evidence-based uh, basis. So whether we should extend the period from two years to three or or two and a half years, we need to consider the uh, evidence. And can we also provide better support to self-help groups so that they can employ more PWDs? Well, actually, we have a support scheme to launch in 2010, and uh, that was for six million for two years, and now we have uh, supported more than seven seventy uh, self-help groups. With a funding of fifty million, and every group uh, will get uh, 
dollars. We hope that such self-help groups can uh, uh, better help uh, PWDs uh, seeking employment. Uh, Mr. Leung Kuo Kang from the Labor Department. Thank you, Chairman. I thank the deputation for offering the, a lot of valuable c comments on the selective placement service of the Labor Department. The uh, selective placement uh, division provides uh, placement services for PWDs. Uh, we is done on a case management basis. We provide counseling, job referrals, and matching. And after employment, we offer a follow up. To, uh, Consultation. We know that the case with each PWD is different in terms of the employment need or the uh, employment uh, orientation. We have been uh, doing a lot to the source job vacancies. We contact employers from different sectors so as to widen the uh, scope of uh, jobs available. Uh, they, they, there is. Uh, they varied, including sales, uh, property management, operative, and manual jobs, and the like. In 2014, we received 9,161 job vacancies, and uh, most of the PWDs on our wait on our list want uh, office jobs. Some 60% of the job vacancy received uh, are clerks or related jobs, uh, administrative and, uh, and managerial jobs and, and, and similar jobs. The Labor Department understands that uh, PWDs with higher education qualifications f uh, face uh, special Difficulties. We understand that the uh, uh, education qualifications are hard won qualifications. A lot of hard work has been put into the acquisition. So we hope that uh, they uh, they will be able to offer suitable opportunities so that they can uh, repay the community that nurtures them. Uh, every case is uh, treated on its own merit. I have to t admit that it's not easy to help PWDs with higher education qualifications to get jobs. We would uh, consider the qualifications, the special needs because of the disability, and we have to, to find suitable job uh, vacancies and do matching meticulously for each and every case. We have stepped up our efforts. In April last year, cases involving the PWDs uh, with uh, higher qu education qualifications stood at f 313. So that's uh, much bet much higher than the 281 in 2013. We'll continue to uh, enhance the efforts to the endeavor to find suitable jobs for every person with disabilities. Chairman, uh, with regard to the submission submitted uh, on the work of the uh, Selective Placement Division concerning the uh, attitude of our staff, uh, if I may, I would like to provide a response here. My department uh, requires that every staff member should serve the public uh, with courtesy and politeness. Actually, I phoned Mr. Chu uh, after receiving the submission. According to Mr. Chu, this attitude issue raised is based on his uh, own uh, perception some five or six years ago. Well, my department uh, stresses the point that every staff member must uh, serve our clients politely. 
And if there's a question with a uh, uh, attitude, uh, we would follow up the case seriously. Uh, let's not talk about the complaint here. Uh, there's another uh, point about the waiting time for an interview. We have a performance pledge. When a job applicant seeks an interview, we will be able to meet the job applicant within 15 minutes of the allotted time. But sometimes the uh, applicant uh, comes without making an appointment. And uh, in that case, the applicant may have to wait until the the case being handled by the uh, officer at the time is completed. For a newly registered job applicant, there will be an extended interview with uh, a placement officer. It will last for more than an hour, and subsequently, the placement officer will uh, communicate continuously with the job applicant, and then how much time is needed for subsequent uh, interviews to take place? Well, every case is different. It depends on the actual circumstances. As regards the second page, it said that the placement officer failed to provide the uh, required service. It was a recent case. The job applicant wanted to change the uh, time f for the job interview. The placement officer contacted the employer. Actually, the uh, job interview uh, was a group interview, uh, and there are many applicants were involved, and the employer refused to change the interview time. And before the holidays uh, started, the job applicant, the PWD, was informed through email, but maybe uh, the PWD was out of town. So he could not get the message. So we took uh, relevant follow up action uh, subsequently. So we hope that uh, we will take, we can uh, com talk to the job applicant and uh, we can sort things out. As regards publicity, we have been uh, doing this on the internet. There is an interactive uh, placement website for job applicants and employers. And we also publicize our work through the website. Last year, through the special supplements of newspapers and video the, uh, publicity material, we publicize successful cases of the placement, selective placement service. We have also got the phone, mobile phone apps. to promote uh, em open employment of uh, PWDs. Thank you. I hope uh, the uh, deputations and subsequently response to those uh, response. Next, Ms. Mm, Economic Analysis and Business Facilitation Unit of the Financial Secretary's Office. Well, um, a number of deputations have talked about the scope of the of the study, and I'd like to spend some time to give you more detail, more details about it. Well, uh, we have excluded um, PWDs with uh, chronic illness, um, with mental um, disability, and also those living in residential homes. We conduct the survey on, in, under the framework of uh, poverty line framework, which is uh, which uses the basis of household, and we get the information from the general household survey, and the survey does not uh, include those living in the residential homes. We have to get in, get data from. Uh, both surveys before we can get, we can include them. That's why they are excluded. And in 2013, about uh, 72,000 uh, PWDs living in homes. 
we have excluded those with a mental disability because during interviews um, there are sensitive information uh, in the well some matters are uh, very sensitive and in June 2013 we see that there are 34,000 uh, people with disabilities. However, in the topical inquiry, only 22,000 PWDs are interviewed. So there is a big gap. If we include this group of people, then we would have skewed the entire picture because we know that there is a huge gap. We don't want to give you wrong well, wrong set of data. That's why we have made it clear that in this study, those with mental disability are excluded. When it comes to those with a chronic illness, they are also excluded because if you're suffering from chronic illness, it doesn't mean that you are disabled. And in the study done by the Census and Statistics Department, a lot of the uh, chronic di uh, diseases is uh, well uh, related to people li uh, living in the urban area. Say, for example, fifty-one percent of them are hypertension. I am a sufferer of that, and of about a quarter of them suffer from diabetes. And we have made a comparison. For chronically ill, when it comes to uh, participate uh, lab, um, labor participation and unemployment rate, the situation is uh, much better than PWDs. We would like to focus on the underprivileged. That's why, when it comes to income, as I've said, this is done under the framework of. Uh, poverty line and when it comes to the poverty line income is used as the basis expenditure is not c included poverty line does not is not equal to poverty al alleviation line the government doesn't just see the poverty line they also see the different needs of pwds it's not the case that um, is uh, the government will only uh, concern itself with information that is mentioned. This is uh, just for statistics purpose. It's not the case, definitely not, that if they are excluded, then we forget about them. Well, thank you f for compiling. The report on the analysis based on this uh, 2013 report, but there are some flaws. Say, um, when it comes to those with mental ill uh, disability, uh, even for the government department, they don't have a reliable figure. I don't know whether you have to go back to the LWB. Some of the information is missing. Can I ask the CNSD to conduct a survey on poverty among those with mental disability? The survey is done based on income, excluding expenditure. But as you've heard, expenditure greatly affects the poverty, poverty situation of PWDs. Is there a chance that you will? conduct some topical studies taking into account expenditure so that we can get a better understanding of the actual poverty situation of PWDs. Ms. Chan from the CNSD. It's the third time that we've conducted um, a similar well um survey of a similar nature. In 2000 and 2007, 
we came across the same problem. We think um, the figure uh, is uh, we have under this is an under um, state under s under um. Um, it's underreported the situation itself. We appeal to residential homes uh, to ask them to provide uh, help so that we can conduct interviews with the consent of parents and interviewers are trained about the different types of disability. We also ask voluntary groups to give briefings about um, skills, interview skills. We regularly remind our interviewers to use different ways to identify um, people with disabilities. But still, we find that uh, the figure is underreported. We've sent letters to overseas as the survey organizations to see if special measures can be used to improve the accuracy. And the reply we got was that there was none. We are understanding the number of PWDs is very important. And because of this, we used other administrative records to estimate how many PWDs there are. That's why we have the figure of uh, 70,000 to 100,000 that we had this range. Although it wouldn't help to find out how many um, people with uh, mental disabilities are poor, we have identified the characteristics of the uh, 70,000 to 100,000. In the uh, topical report number 62, there is an annex and, uh, listing out the special characteristics of this group. Government departments can take reference of the information when it comes to policy formulation. When it comes to expenditure, why is not included in this um, special topic inquiry? The inquiry itself is not a, an independent survey. When we conducted the general household survey, we, on top of that, conduct this inquiry. PWDs and chronically ill, uh, and the chronically ill themselves are challenges when it comes to a survey. That's why we've decided not to outsource it. That's why we decided not to contract it out. We use our trained um, interviewers. And we did it under the general household survey. The household survey itself is quite lengthy. There are a lot of questions to ask about PWDs because uh, government departments would like to use the chance to get the information they need. So apart from um, classifying whether they are PWDs or not, we have to know about the severity, the impact of the disability or the chronically Ill or the chronic illness. The treatment they receive, questions were asked about the carers, about the service they need, the use of IT and transportation. So we have a list of questions to ask. And sometimes uh, there are more than one PWD or uh, chronically ill in a single household. So a lot of time was used. Too many questions in a uh, in a in a questionnaire will in an interview will affect the accuracy and we use income to calculate the poverty line and that's why questions about expenditure were not asked in this survey
Thank you. Thank you for the detailed explanation. Although in a lot of areas uh, you are saying one thing while the deputations ask about another. I will now open the floor for members to ask questions. Let me raise out their names. Tanka Piu, KK Fong, Chen Yunhan, Peter Jung. Mr. Tang, please, four minutes. We'll do our best. I thank the deputations and individuals for coming to speak to us. And a happy new year to you, Under Secretary. Speedy recovery so that you can continue with your work. I know that um, if well, anyone who's been in a meeting with you, they would know that you were the ex commissioner for rehabilitation. And you're very familiar with this topic. Are there any uh, focus measures for um, people with special disabilities? And what about carers, carer subsidies for this uh, for the uh, PWDs? Is it being considered by the CCF? I just need a short answer. We have DA. I'm very concerned about this, about the unclear definition and the small amount of subs under of the allowance. It's also the concern of Mr. Wonko King. Apart from these two schemes, uh, is there a, a third scheme? Say, for example, um. The OALA is uh, something something on top of um, the OH allowance and the CSSA. So, will you uh, consider something similar? Is it going to be uh, an overhaul, a huge improvement about the DA soon? Will you have this uh, talent-wise employment charter? You appeal to all government departments to participate. You might as well set a target for employment quota. Are you waiting for a conclusion of the charter before you decide on the mandatory quota? What about uh, a rehabilitation um, service proposal? Oh, under the CCF, there is the care. Care subsidy for the elderly it started in June last year. It will last for two years. We will see how effective it is. As I said, we have commissioned the Hong Kong U to conduct a review. Apart from looking at the amount of subsidy, eligibility, and uh, the target groups, inevitably we will also look into whether it's applicable to carers for PWDs. In the welfare panel, welfare services panel next month, um, this topic will be discussed again. We've asked our consultancy team from the Hong Kong U to give you a progress report. I mentioned that case. It's uh, an example because uh, someone asked uh, whether CSSA will be will uh, be changed to an individual basis. As I said, CSSA is on a household basis. If we change this, it will change the uh, entire system. There will be implications of um, there will be financial implications and other implications as well. We fully understand that uh, there is a uh, PWDs have. Um, 
needs. And we are also aware that a single system cannot meet all the different needs of different people. Last year, we have regularized a, a, compre a an integrated um, subsidy scheme for those with severe physical disability. Say, for example, if they need to procure consumables and also breathing apparatus, then um, su subsidy will be given to them. It's for CSSA recipients because they don't they have very little in income. It was under the CCF and is now regularized. We target the specific needs of PWDs and we will um, explore different options. And uh, should we set up an a target or an indicator for the civil service? I think as the Secretary for the Civil Service has said that uh, we, we employ in the in the civil service there's a 2% of uh, PWDs. It's not a target, it's not a cap. We uh, make, we announce the figures annually and we are subject to public scrutiny to see if we have been able to make progress. But uh, on what fronts can more can be done? Well, I think we can all monitor the progress made by various departments, uh, rehab services. As indicated previously, we have uh, started the planning on elderly services. If we look at the figures among the PWDs, some 60% are elderly persons. Those with, in particular, those with uh, uh, long-term care needs. So the findings of the reviewed would uh, facilitate the upgrading of services. What about employment? Uh, yes. We'll look at um, employment, participation in uh, leisure and recreational activities, and uh, use of IT. We have been launching new measures to, to facilitate employment. We also know that uh, the uh, mentally dis disabled persons are also suffering from an aging pro problem. When the uh, the planning on uh, elderly services uh, is uh, going to be completed. We would uh, carry on with a similar planning process with uh, the services for PWDs. So I believe uh, it, it would uh, start in the coming two years. And if you want to cover uh, services for the elderly or the PWDs, then you are not just talking about uh, poverty alleviation. But since this subcommittee is on poverty, I think we should focus on poverty-related issues and uh, poverty of uh, PWDs. Otherwise, uh, we can talk and talk, and then we're still not uh, talking about poverty. Well, it's said that if you are over on, on the right side of the poverty line, then you are not poor, and if you don't have uh, the necessary income level, I can give you more to lift you up above the line. And if you cannot get a, a job with this sufficient pay, the assistance will be offered. I'm using your logic, although we do not agree with the uh, f 
concept behind the poverty line, and that is how can we lift the income level of PWDs uh, to the to to such a level that is uh, over the poverty line. And Ms. Redding, the principal economist, has said that uh, that the poverty line is not the, the is not the sole standard for offering the assistance to the poor. But if that's not the if that's the case, what is the basis? What is the yardstick? And what is the purpose of the poverty line? If it's not for the purpose of uh, poverty alleviation. If you look at just income, and uh, what you want to do is to raise the income of those beneath the poverty line. That is simple. If uh, the person cannot take a job, then the government has to take care of the PWD, so that uh, is provided with the necessary the financial support over and above the poverty line, and if the PWD can take a job, then we should try to make sure that the PWD can uh, earn a sufficient pay, and the pay should be above the poverty line. Well, if the PWD uh, cannot work. You just give them money, and 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 then the problem will be resolved. But what if uh, they can they can work, but they don't have sufficient job opportunities? If we regard this as a collective responsibility, then uh, it's a collective responsibility for the government and for private enterprises. You, if you, the government says it's. It shouldn't be solely the responsibility of the administration. So, how much do you want to show that as your responsibility? If you cannot take take up the full responsibility, then what's the the ratio that you want to take up? Not two percent. You cannot say that uh, when you are asked to show the responsibility, you you ask the other parties to do it. I think it's not just the responsibility of the government. All enterprises should show the responsibility, and we have social enterprises. They are there to help the disabled, the mentally ill, the mentally disabled. But the government's uh, social enterprises are enterprises of set up with. Just a a start of fun from the government. We visited Spain, and they had a they have a full set of policies, so that SEs are sustainable in Korea and Taiwan. They they have a full set of support measures. You should allow some time for a reply. I don't need a reply. And people working for SEs in those countries can get the basic income, the same level as the able-bodied workers. And uh, their efforts are recognized as equal to the able bodied counterparts. Why can't we do it since uh, South Korea and Taiwan can do it? I don't think you can change the uh, government's uh, values in five minutes, Ms. Chen Yun Han. First of all, I'd like to thank the deputations and individuals for coming to this. Uh, Meeting the, on the sixth day of the uh, lunar new year. I wish you a, a prosperous and fruitful new year. This morning we talk about retirement protection. Uh, we were 
most unhappy. I uh, I still call you commissioner, though you're the under secretary now. It seems that the administration is uh, doing things very slowly. I I mean policies are implemented very slowly. We talk about low income uh, family working family allowance, and uh, we have been talking about it for a long time. But we have been looking look, talking about PWDs problems for even longer. Uh, we used to talk about minimum wage. It was first raised by a Catholic organization. And now life L I F A LIFA has been approved by the F C So that issue uh, was discussed for a long long time. I don't want to make a comparison with the PWD situation. The my point is we need to have a timetable. In your answer to Mr. Tanka Bill, uh, you seem to suggest that there's a timetable, but I don't think there is one. We've been talking about this for ages. We want the government to set a certain percentage of jobs for PWDs. It should be much higher than what it is. And then you can ask the business sector to do to follow suit. You should consider offering incentives to businesses and also to public sector organizations. Something must be done. It's been discussed for a long, long time. Second, I want to say something about the job. And job market. We knew that uh, in a case involving an unemployed person, uh, he jumped off a building with his uh, grandson. That was sad. Well, a job is not just a job. It's about uh, the workers' uh, dignity. But the job market in Hong Kong is not uh, very good. Otherwise, we don't need to have the minimum wage. There's an imbalance of uh, labor supply and demand. That's why we need to address the imbalance through policies. The government must handle employment problems properly. Everyone wants to have a place. In our community, the government should set a target, and we should look at the wider picture. Hong Kong attaches importance to mainstream sectors. We uh, do not uh, pay attention to the disadvantaged, the marginalized people. It's not difficult to address those issues. The U.S. Uh, employs uh, secondary economic measures to tackle unemployment. We can affairs in the busy districts when we build our public rental housing estates. Uh, we can. Uh, do some plan planning. Many uh, people in the creative industries are affected by the rent increase in uh, factory buildings. And now we, at Tom Gong Village, uh, we have uh, earmarked uh, some uh, a few hectares of land. For these people, well, they get re um, a sense of satisfaction and recognition through work. 
it's very important. Just like um, the finance com in the finance committee last year, we asked for places earmarked for um, elderly PWDs in all public housing estates. You need a policy. I'll be quick. When there is um, secondary, um, when when you have uh, in, injected a vitality into the market, then some of the problems will be resolved. Well, you can answer me. You can not answer me. I agree with patchwork as well, but at least we need a policy. Perhaps we'll wait for all members to speak before you respond, because there are two other members speaking. Mr. Lam Kwa Hong, I'm not going to go into details. From what I've heard, it's a problem with the policy. When it comes to problems faced by PWDs, how um, does the government want to resolve the problems? If you have, if it can be resolved with money, then it's not actually a problem. Are we a poor society or a poor city? No. Mr. Tenkapu talked about carer care subsidies. It's only available for carers of elderly people and not PWDs. I think it's the same logic. If you want to leave, if you want to help with the elderly problem, then you give care subsidy. I think it's a a matter of how much money is made available. Don't tell us. Don't tell us we don't give you money. You don't come to us for money. Well, if you can f uh, find the number of people suffering from visual impairment, then we will give you the money. It's actually a very simple problem. I understand that there are difficulties, but if it's not the case that you have to lose all your limbs before you are class, you are defined as disability, then there is flexibility with the policy. Then you, all you need is money, and if you think that um, people may sue you, well, at least you will have to give us. Uh, an estimate, an assessment of the situation. That's the same for employment quota. You uh, well, people say that gov civil servants uh, work to death, and you said, well, they uh, they uh, have themselves have got illnesses already. I think it's uh, the stance of the government because if there is a will, there is a way. We are an affluent society. This is not force majeure. No one will harm him, him or herself. You say people are lazy, and pe that's why they don't work. Or uh, if um, well, someone has a job but um, poor with finance, that's why that person is poor. That may be a reason. But what about PWDs? They have done nothing to get what they have because it's not to do with something they have done to inflict the disability on themselves. That's why I hate you so much. Not not the the few of you who are sitting who who sit here. Tomorrow you'll come here uh, for the budget. And there is the future fund with uh, two with a lot of money. Departments are required to um, cut budget so that more money is saved for the future fund. You set up uh, a lot of uh, small funds and only put in place pilot schemes. That's why. I say that there is no sense of commitment. It's a humane issue. Everyone is born 
with a sense, well, with、uh, sympathy. I'm not saying that、uh, the six of you don't have it. I would like to ask Zhuang Zhang if he has sympathy. Let me give you some example for the care subsidy for、uh, elderly people. There are only two thousand places, so not all of us. There is no commitment. So I think, are they just、uh, inflate a figure?、Uh, inflate the figure because they you they put it under CCF. That's why we cannot regulate it, and、uh, there are only two thousand places. We can't monitor them. There's no commitment. Mr. Peter Zhang, thank you, thank you, Chairman, thank you, deputations and individuals who have come to sp speak. I don't think、uh, the problems will not go away after today, and、uh, we can't have a detailed discussion. Even if you ask the Under Secretary to answer all questions, I don't think he'll be able to do it. I think that we'll have to ask you. To、um, have the agenda worded it on more specific issues, I think we're well. When it comes to people who have no earning capacity, perhaps、uh, they need the help of、uh, the SWD. But what about those that can work? They have earning capacity. And I think maybe the CSB should come as well, and the FSDB should come as well, because we're talking about encouraging private companies to employ PWDs by giving them some、uh, tax incentive. Yes, the Under Secretary has spoken, but we may not agree with what he said. But what about fines or penalties? Well, for PWDs, if they've completed、um, primary or secondary school, and they don't get a place in university, they are they can they they can still work, but if they cannot find a job and they're just、uh, lounging around in the house, their ability will. Diminish, so you need to consolidate all the counselling service, support service related to employ employment. Well, the shelter, the sheltered workshop is operating for decades. So is the DAC. I shouldn't you think of some ways to improve it? A sunny way may be、uh, slightly better, but there is still. Room, huge room for improvement. If they don't work, then they will lose the ability to work. There are PWDs who、um, graduate from universities. How can we help them better? Well, there is a case mentioned. A number of years. Was spent in waiting before、uh, that PWD get a teaching job. We need to help them, help them lead a dignified life. I'm sure the Under Secretary can't answer, can't answer this. It takes the CSB to do that, the two percent quota. Well, the how much is it inflated? I don't know who will come to us to explain. We need more information. And they said that the, there is an annual report, but I would like to know about the number of civil servants with different types of、uh, disability. Say, for example, physical disability, those with autism, those with mental disability, and whether they. Come with the disability, or it develops after they have joined the civil service. I still have a lot of a lot more questions. I think、uh, 
you need to break them down in future meetings. Yes, that is the 14 months after、um, the person has been employed. I want to know why, because there is only one case that's mentioned.、I'm, what about those that are not mentioned? In the complaints division,、um, Chairman, you have received complaints. That is related to、uh, employment of PWDs in the civil service. Perhaps we'll follow up after the meeting. Mr. Tenkapu, second round, two minutes. That should suffice. A number of、um, people mentioned about this long-awaited. Poverty、um, report expenditure is excluded.、Uh, currently, the CNSD is doing a general household survey, and、uh, last time it was announced in 2011. And there is a press release saying that in February this year、uh, you will start the study. You start you start the survey. The、um, findings will be announced next year. Perhaps there can be a chapter devoted. To PWDs to address our need,、uh, well, what we ask for. Since you're going to start the survey anyway, Miss Chan. The survey is done once every five years. We、uh, collect information about a、uh, various expenditure of a household, and in theory, is in.、Um, Expenditure related to disability is included in the household expenditure. The problem is whether we can different we can extract it from the information because the information the data was、uh, not intended for this purpose. I'll have to talk to my colleagues. The number of samples is small, if I remember it right. There are about six thousand、uh, successful households only. So the number of PWDs covered may be small. Well, at least we can see whether we can、uh, do some meaningful analysis. Under Secretary, would you、um, make sure that it happens? We have to discuss with the CNS Steve about the details first. I don't think that is easy. Because for the general household survey, it's the largest in scale, and it may not cover representative number of、um, PWDs, especially those with a mental disability.、Uh, so I wonder, with a smaller sample, whether you will be able to get reliable data about PWDs. And I think you need a special project to do this. I just want to know whether、um, the information we need can be extracted from the the raw data. It's about a minute or so, Mr. C. Would you like to respond? Just a short reply. First of all, I thank Ms. Chen Yunhan. Well, hoping PWDs to find employment is will continue to be one of our focus areas. We will continue to listen to you to find ways to improve our measures. What you said to us is very useful. Well,、uh, whether it is the rehabilitation advisory committee or the task force under the CCF,、uh, we will continue to liaise with them, hoping to find other measures to improve the welfare of PWDs. Well, today is the sixth day of the new year, and there are quite a number of deputations and individuals who have attended. Mr. K. K. Fong and Mr. Peter Jung are right in pointing out that、um, today's topic is quite wide, covering a lot of different issues, and、uh, some members suggested further meetings to discuss these specific topics, perhaps. A part is about、um, PWDs with、um, uh, earning capacities. 
and I know that uh, for some areas, say for example DA, it will be dealt with by the Welfare Services Panel in March. Deputations have given us specific uh, suggestions on a number of areas. Maybe next time we will ask relevant government departments to answer questions, say the Education Bureau, the CSB, the Hospital Authority, and the Food and Environmental High, uh, Food and Health Bureau. Well, uh, we have to end this meeting. I thank you all. Well, it may not we may not see immediate result, but at least the comments are heard. And I ask the government officials to not take this personally because it's about policies. Um, well, they have just pointed out the loopholes in the hope that they will be uh, addressed. Uh, for the next meeting, let's talk about the agenda for the next meeting. The administration has said uh, in the policy address that uh, for LIFA, it takes a long time to implement. So the CACF will come up with something, uh, some st uh, stopgap measure, and uh, we are asked to so-called pocket it first. I know CCF will talk about this, but we don't know when. Do you know when CCF will talk about this interim measure? The next meeting is on the 24th of March. We should invite deputations to express views. The CCF meeting is a closed door meeting, and there's no chance for people to comment on the uh, interim measure. Uh, what do you say, Mr. Peter Chiang? I just want to provide some supplementary information. I understand the CCF is discussing the uh, meta, but it won't go into a lot of detail. You just talk about the amounts to be given and when, when to implement it. It's uh, rather simple and straightforward. If it's just one item for the next meeting, I, I'm. It's a bit thin. Well, they are just going to set up something. Unlike the uh, LIFA, they it's just in the form of a framework, and when the amount will be uh, given, and that's it, Mr. Chen Yun Han. Yes, uh, well, I think we should uh, talk about those who has some earning capacities and those who do not. So perhaps uh, we should talk about another item as well on top of the CCF measure. Let's ask the Secretariat to uh, work out the, uh, the the time frame, but don't, we don't need to rush to uh, any decision. There are only three of us here. Uh, concerning the interim measure, the one-off measure, uh, would that be a problem if we are going to take it up uh, in the next meeting, Miss Lee? As Mr. Chung has said, this. Uh, Interim measure will be a subject of this of discussion for the CCF, and as Mr. Zhang has said, the basic approach is to make use of the existing mechanism to handle tax textbook grant. So we are not going to have a lot of uh, details for the discussion. Uh, the CCF will. Have a discussion, and uh, it will also 
cover education-related grants and subsidies. So perhaps, uh, well, we involve the Education Bureau. We have to uh, touch base with the Education Bureau after the meeting concerning the uh, opportune time to have a discussion. All right, so let's uh, work out something with the administration after the meeting. But I hope that uh, when CCF uh, makes a decision, uh, we're talking about an interim period of 15 to 18 months. It's more than a year. I hope CCF will have the uh, benefits of views from part different parties. Of course, the main consideration is the amount of uh, the allowance, but you have to take into account the different needs of different families. I hope uh, there will be a chance for electrical members to offer comments. And also you should talk to the Commission on Poverty. All right? If that's so meetings adjourned, thank you.